Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Archimedes' principle, which is one of the foundational concepts in all of fluid mechanics. So first, a very brief history of Archimedes, because you need to know it. It's a crime if you go through all of physics and not know who Archimedes is. So, Archimedes was a physicist born in Greece. He came up with Archimedes' principle, and he was very, very smart. So that's everything you need to know about Archimedes. Now let's talk about his principle. It basically explains how very heavy objects, such as a cruise ship, are able to float in the water despite being thousands and thousands and thousands of kilograms large. Well, the truth is, just like an iceberg, a lot of a cruise ship is actually under the water. Now obviously we know in order to float, the cruise ship needs to be less dense than the water or else it's going to sink, if it's more dense. Well, I'll even take it a step further. If you were to fill all of this volume I'm shading in right now with water, that shaded region of just water would be equal to the mass of the entire cruise ship. In case you're confused, no, I'm not saying if the ship literally flooded with water, because in that case it sinks. But what I'm saying is the weight of the fluid displaced meaning the weight of water that could fit in that blue shaded region, is equal to the weight of the object. And so the formula of Archimedes' principle, well, we first need to know the buoyant force equation, which is going to be rho g v. That is not a p or a curly p. It is Greek letter rho, and that is the density of the fluid you're in, not the density of the cruise ship, the density of the fluid. G is obviously the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 as always, or if you're on a different planet, I guess it could get very interesting. And then V is the volume, but specifically the submerged volume. In other words, not the volume of the whole cruise ship, only the volume that is underwater. And so finally, Archimedes' principle says that the buoyant force is equal to the force of gravity in order to float, meaning rho g v is equal to, force of gravity, mg. Yes, gravity cancels, so it doesn't matter what planet you're on for Archimedes' principle to work. And we're just going to get density of fluid times volume submerged is equal to the mass. And there's a few different ways you can write this, but this is the way I like to. So there you go, Archimedes' principle. Now, let's do some practice problems to make sure you really understand it. So here's the first one. We have an ice cube, density 917 kilogram per meter cubed, is submerged in water, density of 1000 kilogram per meter cubed. What percentage of the ice cube is underwater? So you'll notice a couple things I don't give you. I don't give you the dimensions of the ice cube, meaning that must not matter. Also, you don't know this yet, but the ice cube doesn't even have to be a cube. It can actually be any shape. It's not gonna matter to answer this question. So all we need is Archimedes' principle, rho v equals the mass. Okay, well, now we have a couple problems. Number one, what density is this? Because I gave us both, right? So if you said 917, you would be incorrect. Because remember, this is the density of the fluid, water in this case. So in other words, 1000. Volume submerged, we have no idea. But let me give you some advice. Volume can be broken up into area times height. Assuming it's some kind of uniform shape, it's gonna be area times height. So I'll just write that right here for the volume side. I still don't know what any of these things are, so that's gonna be a problem for later, I suppose. But on the right side, we have mass, and it looks like I forgot to give us the mass of the ice cube, darn. But I did give us the density. And density, I guess I should have wrote this down earlier, but density is equal to mass over volume. So in other words, if I want to solve for mass m, I just have to multiply both sides by the volume. So m equals density rho times volume v. These are different densities and volumes, by the way. This, I'm talking about the density of the ice cube, 917. And this volume is not area times height, but instead area times capital H, I'll call it. Let me draw a picture to show you the difference. So here's my ice cube floating in water like this. 
And just imagine I'm cutting out a slice of the ice cube, a cross-sectional slice with area capital A. This little h is the height that's submerged because that's on the left side and the left side is the submerged height. While capital H is gonna be the height of the entire ice cube. Now the good news is area doesn't matter if we're looking at the underwater part or the above water part, that's gonna be the same. And so in other words, a will cancel. So I have 1000 little h is equal to 917 big h. But if I want to answer the question, what percentage is submerged under the water? Well, this still isn't going to be easy. So the answer ends up being, if you can find little h divided by big h, that's the percent that you're submerged. And that makes sense. Just think about it. If the whole ice cube, let's say is four inches tall, and two inches are underwater, then 50% is submerged. That makes sense. But in order to get little h over big h, I'm gonna to have to divide both sides by h and also divide both sides by a thousand. So in other words, h over big h is equal to 917 over 1000, which is just 0.917. If you want that as a percentage times 100, so it looks like 91.7% of the ice cube is underwater. Which by the way, if you wanna know why you ever see those pictures of the iceberg and so much of the iceberg is under the water, it's because 91.7%, well, that's assuming it's a freshwater iceberg, which technically is a lie because this is gonna be in the ocean and ocean water has a different density than freshwater. So just pretend with me for a second, 91% of the iceberg is under the water. So just to recap what I did really quickly, I said rho times V equals mass, volume is equal to area times height. By the way, you should probably always use this relationship for volume when solving Archimedes principle problems, because generally that's what you have to do to solve the problem. And then for the right side, we had to find the mass by using the density equals mass over volume formula and solving for mass. And then from there, the rest of it was plugging into the formula and solving for little h over big H, which is always gonna be the percent that is submerged. And if you wanted the percentage that was above water, you would just do this calculation and then do 100 minus 91.7 and you get 8.3. So very easy to find the percent above water too. But now we have a second problem that we're going to look at, really a part two to the first one. The ice cube is measured to be two centimeters tall. If the ice cube is now placed in maple syrup, I don't know why you would do this, but that has a density of 1,330 kilograms per meter cubed, what height is still above the syrup? Great question, Dan. So first of all, same formula. And yes, I still will be breaking it up into rho area times little h equals mass of the ice cube we said was density of the ice cube times the volume of the ice cube area times big H. So rho ice area big H area still cancels out. We know rho for the syrup, the fluid is 1330. Little h I don't know. Rho for the ice is still 917 for that density. And we do know capital H because we said we measured it to be two centimeters tall. That's the total height. Now we can leave it as centimeters. Just know that our answer, little h, is going to be in centimeters too, which is fine. Also, you should know that height little h is not the final answer. That's going to be the height submerged. If we want to find the height still above syrup, that's going to be big H minus little h. But don't worry, little h is very easy to find now. It's just going to be... 917 times 2 divided by 1330 and that's going to give us 1.38 centimeters again submerged which means the height above is going to be 2 centimeters the total minus 1.38 giving me a final answer of 0.62 centimeters that's how much is above which by the way is gonna be more as a percentage than water. And the reason for that is maple syrup is much more dense than water. So it's gonna float more easily. 
So that's going to do it for today's video on Archimedes Principle. Thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.